Ah, oh, the Honourable Paul Green. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. I rise tonight to speak on, the, uh, on behalf of the Christian Democratic Party on the Coastal Management Bill 2016. Uh, Madam Deputy President, uh, the object of this bill is to provide for the integrated management of the coastal environment of New South Wales, consistent with the principles of the ecologically sustainable development for the social, cultural and economic well-being of the people of New South Wales. The bill consequently repeals the Coastal Protection Act of 1979 and the Coastal Protection Regulation of 2011. I've been contacted by uh, different stakeholders raising concerns in relation to this bill, uh, including uh, the Shell Open City Council who raised uh, the following concerns, and that is um, uh, the lack of detail regarding the SEP, uh, stating the difficulty in, in commenting on this legislation when the Council cannot see the detail of the SEP. And that, that seems to be something that's uh, been across different stakeholders' concern. Uh, the other issue they had was the potential cost implications for Councils if the uh, existing studies and works undertaken are not recognised in the New South Wales, uh, sorry, in the new uh, coastal management plan format. Uh, particularly, the Shell City Council has invested considerable resources and uh, uh, funding into developing uh, coastal hazard pol policies. Uh, flooding and estuary uh, uh, management plans for our most vulnerable locations, also based on, our, uh, on the, the Pacific location uh, in specific research. The uh, Council has also taken on board the invitation to develop their own SLR projects and have uh, embarked on a review program, uh, program to establish uh, local base controls reflecting local projections. Of course, the Shoalhaven Council is now faced with a potential requirement to adopt state-based zones and or to commence again the uh, process of developing a new coastal management plan based on new format. The Council requests uh, that they need to be able to utilise uh, their own controls based on uh, their research and, and fold this uh, into the new coastal plan rather than go back to square one. Uh, one of the, the, the third issue that they have is the potential cost and uh, resource implications for uh, the, the council and many other councils, given that the number of lakes and estuaries and uh, floodplains and catchments uh, have uh, uh, they have it under their care is uh, quite significant. Um, Madam Deputy President, I, I also want to acknowledge my colleague Jan Barham, and <coughs> uh, obviously in her great history with Byron Shire Council, and, uh, which has battled some significant erosion issues up there on the coast. I would also like to quote uh, from her uh, comment that the New South Wales Coastal Alliance media released uh, made mention of, and that is the quote, the coastal zone mapping and CMSEP uh, must be publicly exhibited uh, for comment prior to the in introduction to Parliament, unquote. Uh, just another issue that's uh, come from stakeholders. And of course, I agree with my colleague. Once again, uh, can I stipulate that all stakeholder contributions are important and need to be heard in this uh, particular debate. Having been Mayor of the Coastal Council, uh, it has been incredibly frustrating for many residents with the fluidity of guesstimates around uh, things like sea level rise uh, in terms of um, projections, long-term projections, uh, coastal erosion and, of course, uh, climatic impacts, uh, all of which uh, adversely affect the value of many coastal properties. Of course, we note that many families in coastal regions have invested a significant amount of money only to find that their footpr uh, footprint of their property has either halved, quartered or been third or in many cases sterilised by formulas that have been since been proven un unhelpful in addressing uh, climatic impacts and projections. Uh, we must be mindful, Madam Deputy President, yes. that laws made in this place can adversely impact many p innocent people and families who own properties adjacent, adjacent to the ocean and, of course, uh, uh, river fronts. Uh, the, the day has gone, uh, Madam Deputy President, in this particular case where Local councils should do what they are told, whether it be by the government or through legislation uh, that is made in this place, uh, which is far removed from the realities of what is experienced up and down the coast of New South Wales. We appreciate that the government in this particular bill 
wants to address these very serious concerns. However, it must be realised that one size does not fit all. The New South Wales government, uh, sorry, the New South Wales coastline is made up of many e e ecologies and uh, ecologic, uh, ecologies that react uh, differently to uh, varying conditions. Therefore, a roundtable approach uh, to these uh, bills like this uh, uh, is needed. The roundtable must take into consideration the affected person, the history, uh, the, sorry, the history or the historical local knowledge, and of course the concerns of local councils and state bodies who are very familiar with those local areas. To come uh, at this challenging and growing issue from a top-down approach, obviously, uh, is not only ignorant, but probably negligent. Uh, there, there is no doubt, Madam Deputy President, one of the greatest challenges in the future in the, uh, is addressing the possible infrastructure destruction in these coastal areas, uh, if we were to go with the current predictions uh, of things like sea level rise. Infrastructure such as roads, guttering, uh, uh, utility infrastructure as well as sewer and water infrastructure. In some of these uh, committees, uh, the exposed, uh, being exposed to these vulnerable uh, climatic changes uh, will cost millions, if not hundreds of millions, potentially billions uh, of dollars. There's no way local uh, communities can carry this particular burden on their own if proven true. Uh, if the federal government is convinced about climate change and the projections that ensue, this needs to flow through the methodology and assumptions that are made uh, in distribution of the federal assistance grants. <laughs> the uh, federal government cannot bury its head in the sand on this matter. The federal government needs to put their money where their mouth is. They need to help coastal communities adapt adopt and fund them uh, in order to prevent the future destruction of infrastructure against, uh, again, such as roads, guttering, utility infrastructure, as well as sewer and water infrastructure. Many local councils, uh, coastal councils, uh, have invested significantly into addressing coastal management issues and meeting the state government's requirements. In many cases, regarding coastal management issues, uh, there, uh, there, there are local councils uh, that will be left way out of pocket because the costs involved in meeting these requirements and the changes uh, that, are, uh, that are being predicted uh, will be far outweighed with the, the, the ability for local councils and ratepayers and ratepayer base uh, to cover those costs of uh, addressing that infrastructure uh, challenge. In the end, with the feedback that the Christian Democratic Party has received, we are uh, of the view that New South Wales government must address uh, full cost recovery and or compensation for local councils when changing coastal management plans where significant investment has been made uh, to the, get them to the stage that they're at. Um, the government is to be applauded that they're combining uh, the different uh, SEPs into one uh, and uh, that, that, that can be applauded in terms of uh, that it will be easier to manage at a local level. Uh, and, and probably uh, streamline in terms of the red and green tape that needs to be addressed. Uh, the Christian Democratic Party has asked the uh, Parliamentary Secretary to put on record such compensation and how it will be addressed uh, before the Christian Democratic Party will conclude uh, in terms of positions on this matter. Um, I do note that we uh, had some further uh, information at the, the crossbench uh, briefing as well, uh, which I'm sure some of my colleagues will bring up some of that. Uh, the, we do appreciate that the Minister has put $83.6 million uh, aside to address some of the issues uh, like funding uh, program, uh, coastal councils uh, in terms of the ability to audit um, programs and plans and of course report to the Minister. Uh, $9 million to upgrade studies and of course uh, $60 million to nourishment uh, of, uh, um, if I could just read these small words, and Deputy President, something to do with sand and... Someone getting a magnifying glass. <laughs> I'm going blind. 50 and blind, it's tragic. Removing existing uh, 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 works uh, in terms of sand management and... Uh, I can't read the rest of it. I can't, can't make much comment. But, it, but I'm talking about the sand management of... Thank you. I want to talk about the sand, but I can't see the words. 
Anyway, the way that the, uh, the, the SAM management is used across the different uh, coastal regions where it moves from one beach to another and the impacts that can have. Uh, we also note um, the sediment oscillation, I think it's called. Is that right? Look at that. Thank God we've got the experts in the uh, public, uh, the President's Gallery. I've got the nod. So that's, that's the right terminology right there. So the science and the uh, sediment oscillation is very, very important. And of course, pardon? <laughs> Spell it. IT. Okay, IT. <laughs> um, Bad jokes out. It's great. And of course, uh, we know that uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of work's gone into this, and we applaud the government for doing this because it's not been a, a, an easy uh, bit of legislation to get to. Uh, and we know that there's more work to be done. Uh, we know that the, probably the Greens and Labor will tell us what else we need to do to fix this. Uh, but look, it's on the right track. Um, I, I do note that um, some of the issues out there in, in the grassroots land is the way that we've been working through this has been risk aversion rather than risk management. And I think uh, when it comes to the residents that have, uh, in many cases in my areas, is uh, uh, many pensioners have bought houses when they're in 1950 where they were worth a couple of bucks and now they're on million dollar properties. And of course uh, we get the other people that come down there and buy those properties and want to build McMansions on them and basically uh, utilise every inch of those, uh, those ocean front blocks. Now that's becoming an issue because obviously if you paid a lot of money for a piece of land, you want your return, you want the promise of the, the future value. Of course, um, some of the uh, implications of sea level rise or climatic changes uh, is now sterilising the size of those blocks and the full return may not be realised. So these are challenges. Uh, these, are, these are people's investment funds. They've sort of put this money into these uh, blocks for their retirement funds or the, to have their twilight years at that area, those areas. And of course, so this impacts on their daily lives uh, at, at a very uh, vulnerable end of their lives. So we must be mindful that whatever we do in this house, that while we're ad ad addressing things like erosion issues and sand deposits and trying to mitigate the impacts of uh, climatic changes uh, in different areas across the, the coastal zones, that we also take in the mind uh, some of those peoples on those blocks uh, don't have uh, a deep wallets and uh, virtually are serving out some, some of their twilight years enjoying just the go fishing and having their coffee during the day uh, and that um, massive storm events that rip away half of their property uh, you know, through, through storm events uh, is a very inconvenient situation for them. So we need to make sure that we're looking after our communities and I think this legislation that um, basically comes into that, uh, sit, uh, comes into that field where we're working not just with um, a good minister who has uh, a good understanding of this thing with his team, but we've got good people on, uh, through the councils. We've got uh, community groups out there, stakeholders, uh, that are in have a great interest in how we're treating the environment around these areas. Uh, we must not forget a very important part of the stakeholders, and that being the resident <coughs> that has a block mm -hmm. on that land that, that these decisions that we make can very well uh, sterilise their hopes, their dreams of uh, uh, enjoying uh, time uh, in these coastal properties. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, there's more. I'm glad to hear that we're working more towards risk management because there are hot spots, Madam Deputy President, <coughs> right across New South Wales. The Byron was a, a great example when I was up there at a coastal management conference once. They showed us and took us on tour of the erosion there. It was disastrous. And of course, um, one of the contentions there was the uh, person, I think, rushed to try and fix up the erosion right on the, on the, on the coastal thing, wouldn't it? I mean, I don't know a person here that wouldn't, if that was your property, you wouldn't run down the back and try to do something from your land <laughs> escaping into the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, you would take some things, but we need to be mindful that uh, when we're, uh, the, the people are doing this without the uh, understanding and, uh, of uh, uh, engineering issues that come with uh, coastal movements and wave movements and the moving of soils and sands and all that come with it that they don't realise that actually can impact their neighbour two or three properties down the road. So it's, look, it's good legislation but we need to make sure that we're taking the people that don't know as much about this with us and we need to be mindful that um, rather than risk aversion, a risk management is not a bad way to go. Having a plan with the councils, with the state, with the stakeholders and with the residents is a very smart move. And if we can just make sure that those are the, 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 the people that are in, in authority 
are not going out to whack these people with a stick because they're looking after their, their own land, but merely trying to encourage them to understand the processes and why we're doing what we're doing, why we're asking for a higher level of engineering on their erosion control or whatever that control is around their house, that there's a great understanding that it's not just about trying to sterilise them financially or their, their property portfolio, but it does have an impact on fellow neighbours and it can have an impact on other beaches. Uh, and more so, it can have an impact on our state. So I think it's a well-rounded uh, uh, bill. There's, uh, there's a long way to go, obviously, in this sort of thing, and the more as we uh, face the challenges of uh, climatic changes of the uh, 21st century. But I think we're uh, in the right space with this bill, and I commend the uh, staff for putting together all the stakeholders and commend the bill to the House.